الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافي ومزيد والصلاة والسلام على خير النام وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من وين التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والدلالة على الخير والحث حث على كتاب الله وسنة رسول الله ابتغاء مرضات الله وكربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى Praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى Praise it's worthy of a beneficent bestower of bounties and mercies and we ask our Lord most high to send copious and eternal blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه and we acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and we pay our respects to the elders past and present. So Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his, his infinite mercies uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, life to live inshallah and, and air to breathe and our hearts are still beating and our minds are still working Alhamdulillah and our, the souls are still in our body so that we inshallah azawajal can benefit from the words of the righteous and the, and the words inshallah azawajal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most glorious and exalted in the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and the ahwal and the states of our brothers and sisters that are, that are present in body and spirit and those that are just present in spirit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy, he, he gives to whom he pleases subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's part of people's rizq, is the spiritual enlightenment and understanding of oneself and of the, one, of the world one lives in and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how one will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All that is part of rizq, that's why the, the awliya and the salihin and the ulama talk about that when we read Surah Al-Waqi'ah I know what Waqi'ah is in English The, the Happening The Happening When, when we read that, that verse in the Qur'an, that chapter It's about if a person has difficulty in terms of their sustenance That the righteous and pious people, they lead us to say that when we read this Surah Al-Waqiyah, we shouldn't just be considering and thinking about our sustenance in terms of our worldly sustenance or material sustenance or capital sustenance, but in terms of our spiritual sustenance, how we can get a spiritual increase from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His faid, as they say, from His bounties subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in His khaza'in, in His treasures. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ways to, 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 to give out those bounties. There are asbab. There are, there are causes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to, to nourish his servants and his, and his ibad and the, the most fundamental of those ways is through knowledge is through seeking knowledge and as we all know it's talabul ilm as he said alayhi salatu wasalam talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim or muslima the, the seeking of knowledge so it's, it's in that sense not the actual knowledge itself it's the seeking of knowledge in other words it's being in a state of talab being in a state of yearning, being in a state of, 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 of a zeal to, to benefit oneself and improve oneself and, to, and for self-development and self-improvement and self-growth. That's the farida. That's the farida. That's where the obligation is upon the, every single Muslim and Muslimah, is, is to be in that condition and that state where everything teaches them. And as the Prophet of Allah Ali, Ali also said, Al Hikmatu Dalatul Mu'min or Dalatul Muslim. The the wisdom, in other words, inside understanding is the lost thing of the believer. In other words, the believer is always in search of it. The believer is always looking for it, always looking to improve, always looking to get better, always looking to be elevated in states and conditions and circumstances of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the, at the foremost of that is the intention that one has. And that, that's why, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us tawfiq to, to choose this book. And alhamdulillah, Habib Kadim, he gave us the, the, his blessing to, to, to go through this book, go through the book of intentions by Al-Habib Muhammad bin Alawi Al-Aidarus, who they call him, his laqab is Al-Habib Sa'ad. And uh, the, the reason why... Um, but we chose this book, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, is that when we look at the word niya in the Arabic language, they, they define it as qasd, in other words, purpose. What's, what's one's purpose? And so when we look at individual acts of worship, we can understand niya. Yet, when we look at niyat, and that's when we go through the, the book of Kitab al niyat as it's called, the book of intentions, we... we are given an insight into the, the intentions, the actual intentions, practically speaking, used by the Salaf, in other words, by the righteous predecessors. In other words, going to Hajj, sleeping, all these different acts that a person does, the actual intentions that they used to have are mentioned in the book. So it's a practical guide as well as, as, as a theoretical guide. 
Yet I think for us, people of the West, first world, it's a lot deeper than that, and Allah knows better. It's a lot deeper than that, that the good old, if you see somebody, and you know, like we were in the country the other time, not, not too long ago, and we were conversing with the people that were living there, and really they have nur in their faces, to be very frank. They have nur in their faces. You know, and when you look at the believers sometimes, the Muslims, sometimes you don't see that nur. And then we were, we were talking about why, why is it the case that they have nur in their faces. And if we look at the purpose of their lives, we'll see why. And we'll see, look at the purpose of the lives of the believers. Most of us, we're from immigrant backgrounds, and we're an immigrant community generally. We've come here for a particular reason. And if we ask the Prophet of Allah والسلام, what the fitna of this ummah is, what will he say? In other words, what the trial and tribulation of this ummah is, what will he say, alayhi salatu wasalam? dunya The fitna of Bani Israel, the fitna of the, the children of, of Yaqub, of, of, Isra of Israel, the children, the sons and daughters of Israel, were women. Women got them off track. The fitna for the, the, the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, is al dunya And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, حب الدنيا رأس كل خطيئة that the love of, the, of materialism, the love of material things, worldly things, in other words, capitalism, if you really want to just give it a word, capitalism, right, is the headstone of all khati'ah, all mistakes, all error. And if we think about us as first world people, what is our purpose in life? And going back to the people from the country, their purpose isn't to amass wealth, when you're most of them. Their purpose isn't to become famous, this person, because we've got tall poppies and we're Aussies and we're, you know, we just, that's it, she'll be right. And, you know, no, no one's a sir and no one's a mister. The president's, what's well, GOMO? Our prime minister's like, not even a real name, like it's a nickname. That wouldn't happen elsewhere in any other country, more than likely. Every other country, it's Mr. President, it's the king. You know, you go to Thailand, you can't talk about the royal family. Not because there's, but there's the, out of reverence and respect, but we have a different way of living in this country. And so it's, it's, the nur is because those, those, that impetus and that drive for, to, for dunya isn't there. Their, their drive is for kaif, for relaxation. Generally, when we look at Wazis, white Australians, what do we see? That they've got a set income with a set mortgage, Set lifestyle, you know, bangers and mash on Monday and spaghetti bowl on Tuesday and fish sticks on th Wednesday and it's just like that for the last 30 years. That's how it is. And then they've got a little bit left over. Generally, we're generalising, of course. They've got a little bit left over and they do a little bit of, you know, they have a flutter, a bit of a gamble, have a bit of a drink, and that's th that they're after that relaxation, which is still dunya, mind you. But the impetus isn't there, that drive isn't there. Whereas those from migrant backgrounds have that drive to succeed, have that drive to get a title, have that drive to own and give back and build in their country and build here and rule the world. That takes the nur out of a person. It takes the nur out of a person. So when we look at the word niya and when we look at why we, um, why we, looked at, why we decided to do this, this book, it's because, yeah, we pray and we have a niya when we pray. Yeah? But how many times a day is that? For how long? Yeah, we do whatever we do, but it's a limited. It's 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 specific to a particular. It's specific to a particular thing. It's specific to a particular time and a particular act. Whereas the the niyat, the jama, the 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 the, the, um, the collective of of niya is what we really need. That, that's that's re we need a philosophy, if you like. What's our philosophy on life? Yeah, what's our philosophy? This Shazza, she's not trying to be the prettiest girl in the world. She knows she's not the prettiest girl in the world. She knows that, and she's fine with that. And she's okay, but Fatima or whoever, doesn't, you know, she'll get her lips done and her eyebrows done and her thing, thing, and you know, what's, it, what's it, and whatever else, whatever else. Because there's that drive. There's that drive, there's the pressure, there's the societal pressure, the communal pressure, the familial pressure, whatever it might be. So that changes a person. And once a person's purpose is changed, and once a person's near is changed, 
then they fall into that category of, you know, the, the dunya being ra'sul kulli khati'ah, the capitalism in that sense. And, and dunya is much broader than capitalism. Dunya is much broader than capitalism. But that's one of the major aspects of it. Capitalism, it's not, it's just one aspect of it because it's not only the, it's not only the, the financial aspect of it, but it's me, like I'm somebody. The good old, today, every, everybody is a somebody. How can, no, not everyone can be a somebody. Some people are somebody, they're the, the elite elect, and the rest of us are nobody, right? And the ones who are truly somebody are really, they know in themselves they're nobody, so it's a bit confusing, but it'll clear itself up as things go along, inshallah. Not everyone can be a somebody. Not everyone can be a millionaire. Not everyone can be the best looking person. Not everyone can be popular. Not everyone can be CEO of blue chip company. Not everyone can be everything. Not everyone. It's, you can't. It's impossible. It doesn't work that way. That's not how the world works. If Allah says, even the anbiya are in levels. And human beings are in levels. That's about the dunyawi things in the, the things about the worldly things. So it's that sense of entitlement, as we said. That sense of entitlement, that's the ultimate form of dunya. That I'm, wait a minute, I'm somebody, I'm, that's it, I'm a somebody. I have to have be treated in a particular way. People have to talk to me in a particular way. People have to address me in a particular way. People have to respect me in a particular way. And that's, that's what takes the nur out of, the, out of our faces. That's what takes the nur out of our hearts, and then the nur goes out of our faces. So when, when we have a niyyah about our life, when we have a purpose, a qasud about our life, mutlaqan, absolutely, generally, about everything and, and all things in our life, and we, what, well, the niyyah, tusbaq al-amil. So, ma waqara fil qalb, that's the iman. So the, the, the intention is the resolve that a person has to perform a particular deed. That's what the intention is. The intention is, what's in, in other words, why am I doing this thing? Why am I doing this thing? And then the, uh, the, the deed itself is the what. So the intention is the why. So if I don't have an intention for my whole life, yeah? If I don't have an intention for my whole life, as a whole, and I don't work towards that intention. This is what's going to happen. I want you to w watch because it's like a graph, you know. Right? So I'm praying. Yeah, I'm here. Then I want to go and be good looking and I want to do that. So I'm over there. And then I want a nice car. So I'm down here. And then I want to go to Hajj. So I'm over there. And then I want to get married to a bloke who's not really religious and or a sister or whatever. So then I'm over here. And then I want to do whatever it is and buy the latest and thingity bob. And then I'm over there. And then I'm over there. And then I'm over there. And then I say, how come my life isn't straight? How come my Islam is not doing much for me? My Salat is not doing much for me. My Siyam is not doing much for me. My, my, my fasting is not doing much for me. The money I give you, so, Habibi, you're all over the shop. You're all over the shop. How's it going to happen? It's, it's not going to happen. The elite athletes, yeah, the elite, oh, we always use that example because it's a clear example. What do they do all day long? They train, they eat, they sleep, they watch tape, they get coached, they think about it, they visualize it all day, every day, just about, not every day, but most of their life is consumed. Yeah, go back to the word, hubba dunya, dunya being worldly things, capitalism, capitalist is a consumer. So that's what needs to consume us. Yeah, so if, if I've got my purpose in life and I've decided that that's my goal, meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's my goal, then I'm working towards it. All right, I have a little bit of a, that's okay. Iman yazid wa yankus. Iman increases, but it's not all over the joint. It's not all over the joint. Then when I do pray, I feel the sweetness. Then when I do fast, I feel the buzz. I feel the energy. I feel the light. Yeah? Then when I do 
whatever I do, whatever, puff up my lips, take roids. Everyone, the, all the boys, they're all jabbing their veins to get big muscles. And when I do that, how do I feel then? I've got a purpose and I remember that purpose. I feel, wait a minute, this isn't, what, this isn't giving me what I want. I'm not getting that, that contentment. I'm not getting that happiness. I'm not getting that relaxation. I'm not getting that feeling that, I'm, that I was getting when I was fasting, when I was praying, when I was, when I was giving fi sabillah, when I was waking up at night praying to Hajjud, when I was reading the Qur'an. Because why? My, my purpose is focused. My intention is clear. And I'm working towards that final goal, bi'ibnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, as much as it is the word intention, it, it really is a philosophy. And philosophy is maqasid the sharia it's, it's a little bit different. But for our purposes, bi'idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the end of, of the, the book, uh, by the end of the text, inshallah, azza wa shal, that bi'idhnillah, we will know our purpose. Each and every single one of us, inshallah, azza wa shal, will have worked out his or her purpose. And that's the first part. And secondarily, will have the plan in place and the tools at their disposal in order bi idnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala to work to reaching that purpose, to work to fulfilling that goal that they've set bi idnillah subhanahu And I'm not going to do it. I'll just come do the class and go home. You'll have to do it. Yeah, it's, it's active. It's not a passive thing, seeking knowledge. The, all the fish in the sea don't ask Allah azza wa jal to make to forgive the sins of the of the seeker of knowledge just because they show up. Yeah, well they do actually, but that's not really where it's at. Even those people who just show up, they get their sins forgiven too, so it's alright. But the, the fish in the sea, in other words, everything in the sea, all the marine life, and the, don't forget the earth is two thirds water, so there's much more sea sea life or ocean life if you like, than there is land uh, uh, life on land. Plus we don't live there although we overfish it and pollute it and whatever. So there's, there's more life there than there is on land. They're, they're asking a lot to, for our sins to be forgiven. The angels come under the feet. The angels come under the feet of those who go to seek knowledge. Because knowledge is the way of enlightenment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if those two things be, uh, can be coupled together, that one works out one's purpose and how to achieve it, and seeks knowledge in the same breath, and that person, inshallah, azawajal, will be of the successful in this life and the successful in the life hereafter. Is it not yet? How long? All right. So I know that the, the, the book hasn't, um, hasn't been made available yet, but they're going to put up a PDF, or is that already done? It's up on the Facebook event. The physical copies next week, inshallah. All right, so the copies, will, they look like that, the physical copies? It's a mashallah, it's a really, um, I, I just thought it was going to be the text, but the first 50 pages, 42 pages, uh, just talking about who, who the Imam is and, and what he did. And um, it, it's, uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about it, because actually I know, I know the author, Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I was lucky enough when I was in Tareem to spend some time with him. And he was an amazing, amazing, amazing man. He was really, really, really slight, really slight of build, but he had the biggest smile and didn't didn't say much, Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we used to always we used to visit him and we used to always see him. He used to live on the second story. He used to poke his head out and call us up, come up, come up, come up, come up and drink tea. And we used to go and he used to ask us about Australia and how it was. And he passed away in 2011, Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a he's an ocean of knowledge and hadith. He's um, he actually revived um, the, the school that there would be, there'd been a school there for Hifz al Quran. And he revived that after the communists were in Yemen and, and the socialists in Yemen and the English and as, as the story goes in most countries of the colonization and then again the changing of the philosophy, the changing of the ideology of the people. Now the ideology is what drives the heart and the heart follows that ideology and, the, and once the heart gets turned away from one's purpose then it doesn't matter what one does. It doesn't matter what one does. And he revived the, the school of Hefud and guess who the first Talib to make Hifth in, in his school was Habib Umar, mashallah. He was the first one. And Habib Kadim also, he, he did his Hifth, mashallah, uh, on, on Habib, uh, Habib. We know him as Habib Saad. Everyone knows him as Habib Saad. Everyone knows, knows Habib Muhammad. That's his nickname. I don't know why they gave him that nickname. And he, he used to do the Hadra as well. There was a Hadra in, uh, in Majdil al I think it was, in, in Tarim. Hadra is when they bring the drums out. It's the only, the only, the only time they do it in Yemen. And he was, he was Mushrif. He was in charge of it, mashallah. And, um, 
He was a, a senior scholar and uh, wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he only passed away, like I said, a few years ago, 2011. So, alhamdulillah. Salaam wa rahmatullah. Grab some chairs. It's a bit self service now. Um, and so, we were lucky enough to spend, spend time with him on you. And, he, and at, the, at the Mawalid, he would come and he would talk. And, and when he would talk, he would talk basically in poetry, mashallah. The, you know, what he would say is if you weren't following what he was saying, you just. That's it, you'd be lost, you wouldn't know. Did you ever meet him while you, you meet him while you were in Tarim? Skinny had big glasses as well like that. Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, that's the second reason for, cho for choosing the book because there's, there's Iqbal and there's, Allah has, has accepted him and his intentions, alhamdulillah. And the, the book's been tra translated into numerous languages, uh, alhamdulillah including English. So inshallah, it'll be, it'll be available. And you can read about um, Habib Saad, Habib Muhammad, um, in, in there, there's, there's a bit, a bit of, about his biography, but at the end, there's a translator's epilogue, and he talks about the, um, the 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 prophetic intentions and the intentions of the Salaf. And what he says is, this book illustrates in a practical way the meaning of the hadith of his great uh, grandfather, Alaihi Verily, actions are only according to intentions, and every man shall have according to what he is intended. Whoever makes hijra or migrates for Allah and His envoy, then his hijra. Uh, is to Allah and his envoy, and whoever makes hijra to achieve some worldly benefit or take a woman in marriage, then his hijra is to that for which he has made hijra. So that's the, the seminal hadith, in al amal bin Niyad, in al kulli in the Imanawa, the famous hadith that it's in all the, all the books of knowledge, all the books of hadith when, when one starts off. So uh, the, the, the point of it is that Why the intention is so important, he says, it is what makes an act of worship acceptable to Allah. It is what the Quran and the Sunnah summon us to. Ibn Mas'ud said, no speech or action benefits except with intention. And no speech, action or intention benefits except that which is in accordance with the Sunnah. He also said, if your intention is one of three of these three, to shame the ignorant, to argue with the fuqaha, the jurists, or to cause harm, or to cause people to turn their face in your direction, then do not seek knowledge. So, Ibn Mas'ud talks about the, the, the importance of knowledge and safwa intention, that intention it precedes all action. And if one's intention, and, and when we talk about intention as well, when the scholars talk about intention, it's not just about religious things. It's not just about things that have to do with deen. But to understand what the intention is, it's you know, why are we going to eat that piece of cake? Why are we going to drink that, what is it, caramel chai latte, is that the one? Why are we going to you know, dress a particular way, you know, read a particular thing, watch something in particular, what's the intention? And one thing that's happening to us, Allahu Alam, is that with, with things like social media, we, there's no intention anymore. Well, our, our intention dial is turned off. Well, I think it's even unplugged most of the time. And it's just things happening without, uh, we're not conscious of the things that we're doing. It, it's become un unconscious existence when Allah be subhanahu wa ta'ala it's just an existence of going through the motions and as we said when we saw the people the Australians the Aussies from the countryside the white Aussies from the countryside that's their life if you went no matter how much nur they seem to have if you went and asked them what's the purpose of life they won't know they won't know and then one of the brothers find a taxi drivers always have the best stories because they meet so many different people one of the guys is a taxi driver and he said yeah when I was driving taxi back in the day you know, I'd pick up these professors and these people from, from unis and they'd be all talking about psychology and you know, talking about what their, their field of expertise was. And he said, especially the psychologists, he'd ask them, what's the meaning of life? That's the query. Oh, you know, you're intelligent and you've studied and you've done this and you've got a doctorate and you're a professor. What's the, oh, that's a good question. I have to get back to you on that. And, and yeah, we find that strange. Yeah, but that's, that's the culture we, we grew up in. Yeah, that's the environment in which we live. The air that we, that we breathe is affected by that philosophy. So yeah, they might look like they have nude in their faces and they might look like they're happy. But if one doesn't know the purpose of one's existence, you know, that's... Really, that's the, in my view, and I, I don't want to give a, a technical definition, that's the definition of, of insanity. One going through life and not knowing why they're going through life. Don't know why I'm here don't know where I'm going, don't know what to do while I'm here. Why are you doing that? Oh, that's just what everyone else is doing. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they're like the an'am is the, the animals that we eat and slaughter. So they're herd animals. They just follow each other. So they're like the herd animals, except they're bal, not really, not really. They're worse. They're worse. They're more lost. And I don't mean that to anyone in particular. I mean the person who doesn't know what the purpose of their life is and is not trying to find it. If someone doesn't know the purpose of their life and they're trying to find it, that's different. But I don't care. What's about, ah, oh, she'll be right, mate, she'll be out there, you know, whatever. That's not, that's not a person who is fulfilling their humanity. That's not a person who's striving to reach the spiritual heights that they've been imbued with from Allah Azza wa Jal. That's a person who's ignorant and, and is happy that they say ignorance is bliss. That's a person who's happy in their ignorance when a'udhu billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the person who's adal when a'udhu billah. More lost, in other words, than those animals because the animals know what they're doing. They know they're eating, they know they're procreating, they know they're, going, they're defecating, they know that, that they're hanging out together being animals, doing what animals do. But the human being, when they don't know their purpose in life, they're not as good as an animal. That's what I lost my time saying, it's an analogy. They're not as good as an, an, an animal who's fulfilling their purpose in life. And so that's what we're affected with, whether we like it or we don't like it. When we go to work, maybe eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, a lot doesn't come to mind. Yeah, we pray, but where, when we like, went to Juma today, I went to a city mosque, no one's there. Not even the, the khatib, sorry, I mean, hopefully he doesn't see this. But not even the khatib is rambling on about something and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, the guy's rambling. There are people falling asleep. People look at the clock. The first, as soon as the khatib gets on the mimba, the people look at the clock. The khatib, the guy just got on the mimba. I know you've got things to do. I know. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It's all the hijabi checking out the other hijabi. What are you checking around for? What, her hijab doesn't match her abaya. It's not your problem. It's all right. She's learning too. Maybe she's not a fashionista. So it's, it's those things that when we lose... When we, when, we, when we lose the, the way, we keep on, it just spirals. Because then that turns into what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we see on the billboards, what we see on our TV screens, on our phone screens. It just keeps on spiraling and spiraling. And then we, we can't, the CM is not going to hold it anymore. CM is pretty good, actually. That's pretty one of the good ones. If you pump out three days in a row, you'll come back to your senses. But we don't do that. Why? We don't do that because I've got work tomorrow, I've got a busy day, I've got this blah 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 lost the point lost the purpose so inshallah if we can if we can get that which we will be is the because that's what the barakah of this book is and that's specifically why alhamdulillah we chose and Allah give us tawfiq alhamdulillah so I thought inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala what we could do is go through, go through the first um, the, that first hadith and just do a bit of a sharh the, the hadith in the Malamalu bin Niyat. Um, you've all heard it, there's no doubt, Bidna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you've heard it's in Bukhari, Muslim. It's, well, most of the books start off with it because once a person's intention is, is correct, then they got a chance, they're in. And, and there's other hadith we'll talk with. I don't want to go too much into them because then we're going to ruin the, you know, it's like someone saying, watch what's going to happen in the movie now, watch what's going to happen. So we don't want to ruin the. The excitement of, of learning about the din of Allah and the Prophet of Allah. But that, that um, hadith is very important. It's the, most, it's the seminal hadith when it comes to intention. And there are other fantastic hadith also that we'll, we'll go through, inshallah, as, as we progress. But I think just to kind of get us in the mood, inshallah, and to start um, and start the book, because that's, that's where the Imam starts off, as well as where the Habib starts off. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful and compassionate, righteous intentions. The envoy of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, Verily, actions are only according to intentions, and every man shall have according to what he has intended. Whoever makes hijrah for Allah and his envoy, then his hijrah is to Allah and his envoy. And whoever makes hijrah to achieve some worldly benefit or to take a woman in marriage, then his hijrah is to that for which he made hijrah. So, just for the gender issue, when the, the scholars, they talk, the Hajjad Askalani talks about it, that in the Arabic, when it's the, the, the pronoun for he is used, um, that it means he and she, and it doesn't work as well in the English. In, in the Arabic, it, it has, the, has the sense of jama, it has the sense of the congregation of the genders. In English, it, it doesn't really. 
And that's what they've done. So rather than me saying he, she, he, she, he, she, he, she, he, she, or she, 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 which I used to do, people get confused. So we'll just stick to the he, but we know that it means both he and she. I mean, really what it should say, verily actions are only according to intentions, and to every one shall have, uh, and every one shall have according to what one intended. That's the proper English, but we don't have proper English anymore, so we've just got to make do with what we... I, I personally don't like it. I think it's a bit off-putting, but if your sisters can handle it, we should be right. If sisters got a real objection to it, then I'm happy to, to change it as we go along. Forever hold your peace then. <laughs> so he says, Verily actions are only according, Ali salatu wasalam, he says, Verily actions are only according to intentions, and every man shall have according to what he has intended. So, in other words, what, what that means is that, and the, what the, the Arabs and the ulama they talk about, Al-Farq bayn al-Ada wal ibada so, because in Arabic it sounds nice, poetic, ada, ibada, the similar words. So, ada is what we just do out of habit, right? The sake of doing good for the sake of good, right? That's what we're, that's, Allahu alim, that's what the majority of Muslims are entrapped in. How do I know this? Because every time someone has a dispute with someone, they say, well, I did this and I did that and I did this. And Wait a minute, if you did it for Allah, why would you be recounting what you did for that person? If someone's intention was truly for Allah, they wanted to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they wanted to see the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, why would they recount what they did because a person, they believe a person wronged them? And that's, I spent half my time on the phone or in person dealing with people who were complaining about something that someone's done the wrong thing by them when they've done all these great things. Well, sorry, mom, my friend. Sorry, mate or miss, as the case might be. You just lost everything. It has lost everything. And then the other question is that, of course that's going to happen. When you're doing something other than the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, of course there's going to be a, you know, a mishap, miscommunication, breakdown of communication, breakdown of relationship, and the same with husband and wife. Yeah? Allah says, don't forget the favors that are between you. But now we want to recount the favors. But I did this and I bought that and I sent and I went and I stayed up all night when you were sick and, and this and I you know and my brother and my sister and the whole world and the next world and how do you expect there to be the continuation of what you started under the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're going to keep bringing up you know this and that and that and this and this and that it's, it's not it's not not going to happen it's not going to work so that's, that's where I believe the majority of us are stuck. We're good, alhamdulillah. But for the sake of good, we're not good for the sake of Allah. And there's a big difference between that. Because there's no reward in it. Yeah? And we read in Surah Al-Kahf, at the end, the person, what? They got in the last few verses in the, in the, in the, in the, in the surah, in the chapter, they did, they did all those works for nothing. Because their intention wasn't right. So that's why verily, innama, Verily, that deeds only, are only by their intentions. That's not what it says. Oh, it is. Are only according to intentions. In other words, you don't have intentions, you don't have deeds. If one's intention isn't a proper intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then unfortunately that's not going to count as a deed. You might, you, know, you might get some love out of it in this world, and that's what that is. It's the love you get out of it, that temporary thing you get from whoever and the little buzz you feel, right? But they say, the ulama say, that the, the deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly accepts, you forget. You actually forget those. Why? Because they're taken into the samat. The angels take the, in the suhuf, they write in the, you know, the qib atid, they write scrolls, you know the scrolls, they're writing and they're writing. Hopefully they're writing, they're busy and they get their friends to write, help them out because they're doing so many good deeds. The Asr and, and, and Fajr, they're going up and down the angels changing shifts. I'm not making this up, eh? Hey? He's a little bit shocked. Not more, I'm talking in a little different way, but that's what goes on. It's a shift change, right? The angels of the night go up and the angels of the day come down and then the angels of the day go up and the angels of the night come down. That's what's in the prophetic tradition. So the deeds that you've done for Allah, you'll forget. Like someone later on will come and say, Happened to me the other day, I don't know what I did, something, so I forgot, there you go, right? And then someone's like, yeah, but that's it. I'm like, really? I forgot. I didn't have any idea that that was the case, 
And I can't remember, and thank God I can't, humbly, I can't remember. So you'll forget it. But the ones you remember, like Sadaqatun Tatba'uha Adha, like a Sadaqa, uh, the other one, Bilmanni, Wal Adha. What's the first part of it? Uh, it man is favor. I did a favor for you, man, but you owe me. Then that wasn't for Allah. If that's what I'm thinking in the, in the thing, I did something for someone nice, right? And then I'm thinking they owe me back. It's not for Allah. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if you look at your deeds from now to next week, just pick an hour. I guarantee you the majority of our deeds fall into that category. Either good for the sake of doing good or tabadul. You know, I'll do something for you so you can do something for me. Scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And I have to say, Allahu Alim, Illa Man Rahim Rabbi, it's very few of our daily deeds that we're actually conscious of our why, our purpose. Why am I doing it? It's very few of our deeds. It's very, very, very few of our deeds. So let's look at it going back to the purpose of life. If very, very few of my deeds are on that purpose, how can my life be on that purpose? How can that be the case? It's impossible. It can't. It doesn't make sense. It's one plus one equals some crazy odd number. It's not even, none of those numbers with like X's and plus and like funny little things. I don't know much about maths, obviously. It ends up equaling that. It ends up equaling that. Then we're like, why is my life like that? Allah's trying to wake you up. Allah's trying to call you, saying, hey, I'm, I'm here, do it for me. Do it for me. And that we're not even talking about ikhlas and niyyah. Mind you, sincerity of intention is something completely different. That's another stage altogether. The sincerity, let's worry about that when we understand what our intention is. But the purpose in, of itself. Because why? We're distracted. We're distracted. We are a distracted species now. First world people, that is. Um, we, we talk about us. The rest of the world, man, they don't have to worry about anything. They, the only thing they've got to worry about is their food. And, you know, like, they know they don't create it. They know it comes from Allah. So they're worried about Allah. Ya Allah, make it rain. Ya Allah, we don't have to worry about that because we've got coals 24 hours. Don't worry about this. Stand on the thing and press the thing. And they don't even have to talk to anyone anymore. And the guy that comes and delivers doesn't even speak English anyway. It's like, he says your name. And like, yeah, you know, whatever, man. Thank you. Just give me the food. Don't worry about what my name is. You take the food, you go inside. There's no, there's no, what for? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it anymore. So, why should I worry about Allah? I got that thing. So, that's why we have to check ourselves. That's why we have to make sure that we, I'm telling this, that that's the homework. I know because we've got no, no, nothing to read. So, the homework from now till next week. Just pick a couple of hours because you won't be able to do the whole week. And then when you see, you wake up. I know like it sounds harsh what I'm saying. Does it feel harsh? Be honest with me. It's all right. Yeah, it's a bit harsh, eh? Right? But when you do it, when you do it, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll be alive. You'll be like, what? Hey, that's, um, it's like I was asleep. I was in a coma and now I'm awake. Wait a minute. The world looks different. Colors are brighter. Really, that's what happens. Sounds sound different. The way I interact with, my life slows down. Life slows down. And I start to taste the sweetness. I start that, that light starts to shine in my life of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, firstly in my heart. Because where's the place of intention? All right, it's in the heart. It's in the heart. So what am I doing when I'm making an intention? Hello? Yeah, what am I doing about what I'm, what, what, to who? And Allah. Allah. I'm starting to remember Allah now. I'm starting to remember Allah. And it's not like Subhanallah, Muhammad, Subhanallah, 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 Sub my heart saying, oh, Allah. That's my heart crying out, saying, Allah, I'm, I'm here. Hey, it's me. Look, I'm making an intention for you. 
That's, that's the secret of it. That's the sir of, of the intention. And where does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look? In Allah la yandru ila suwarikum wa la ajsamikum wa lakin yandru ila kulubikum and another way wa a'malikum. Allah doesn't look at the outside. It doesn't matter how big your biceps are, how sexy your lips are, how perfect your eyebrows are. None of that matters to Allah. How big or small your feet, depending on if you whatever. That doesn't matter. Allah looks at the hearts. So here you are saying Allah in the heart. Allah's looking. Saying Allah and Allah is looking. That's, that's, the, that's the illumination. That's the consciousness. That's the awakening. That's the awakening. And even if you only do it once in a week, it'll change your life. Just once from now till next week, just once, it'll change your life. It'll change your life completely. Be like, whoa, I'm, I'm awake. What do they say? Woke. I'm woke now. I was, you know, comatose. The real work, yeah, not the you know play work. Yeah, I'm 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 alive. Wait a minute, oh, I can breathe now. I've got time to breathe. My lungs are filling up with oxygen. It's okay. Now it's become okay. Now, the serenity starts to hit because Allah is here and Allah is looking. Right. That's the secret. So. What's the point of me praying? Uh, it's too big an example. What's the me of drinking? What's the point of me drinking if I'm not saying Bismillah, if I'm not seriously drinking for Allah? It's not going to break my thirst. It's only going to make me sick to the truth. In reality, drinking and not remembering Allah is going to make me sick. It's going to make my Qareen. The Qareen is the, the shaitan that you know, hangs out with you all day and all, you can't get rid of him. You know? It just makes him stronger. Anything or her, as the case might be. Right? It's actually detrimental. But when I remember, then my action goes from ada to ibadah. From just the doing, it, doing it for the sake of doing it or feeling thirsty or whatever it might be to doing it for Allah. And Allah's like, yeah, I'm, I'm watching you now. Now I'm looking at you because why? You remember me? Adhkuruni, adhkurukum. Remember me? I remember you, he says. I'm not making this up, by the way. The whole, this is all legit. I'm not just like, you know, it's in the Qur'an. Whoever makes hijrah for Allah and his envoy, then his hijrah... I still don't like the his, I'm sorry, but anyway. I've got a problem. I, have, I know the sisters don't have a problem with it, but I do. Then his hijrah is to Allah and his envoy. So, man kanat hijratu ilallahi wa rasulihi, fahijratu ilallahi wa rasulihi. Now, what's hijrah? Hijrah, in this context, in the, when, the, when the Prophet ﷺ said the hadith, was the hijrah, originally it was to Abyssinia. We forget that. There was two hijras before Medina. Two, both to Abyssinia, both to Najashi. Both to Najashi, the king, the Christian king. Uh, let the brother sleep, let the brother sit down, otherwise he's going to fall off his chair. Sit down, bro, sit down, have a rest. Have a rest, he just came on the plane. You know, like, Alright? All right? If, you, if you fall, I've got no uh, a disclaimer, I'm a lawyer. You know, there's no liability will be taken. Right? That to hijrah, from what to what? From kufr, from the lands of kufr of oppression to the lands of justice. Because that's what the Prophet says to Saddam, he's a just ruler. Yeah, the Najash is a just ruler. Then the, the real hijrah they're talking about is what? Mecca to Medina. The hijrah from Zulumat ila Nur or from a non Islamic land to an Islamic land. Yeah? But then when Fatah Makkah, when Makkah was it's not conquered, it's a Fatah, different to a conquer. It was opened. It was relieved of the, the you know, idolatry and the the, the the oppression that was the, the oppression that was in the darkness. Then there's no more hijrah after that time. He said, "There's no hijrah after Fatah, There's no hijrah. So what about us? How can we make hijrah? So the scholars say, from disobedience of Allah to obedience of Allah. Anything that takes us from the disobeying, living in a place, dressing in a, in a way, eating in a way that disobeys, it's masia to ta'a. That's hijrah. But what there has to be? has to be an intention. There has to be a niyyah. There has to be a qasb. There has to be a resolve. There has to be a purpose. There has to be a why. Why am I doing that? But how about this? Now, I, I don't have an answer to it, but I just want to share it with you. How relevant the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he is. Look, I know there's a lot of tashwish, a lot of like, you know, to shwish like you know Chinese whispers and 
stuff going on about the Prophet Isaiah from people who don't know the Prophet Isaiah. Where's who's the Hijrah to? You tell me. I want you to tell me who, where's, who's the Hijrah for. Who, who's the Hijrah for? He says, whoever makes Hijrah for who? Uh, and and his messenger. Hold on a second. Isn't that shirk? Isn't that kufr? It's the it's like Sahih Bukhari. It's the most famous hadith, and we haven't like we're trying to say we know the Deen. Yeah, people coming to try and say they know the Deen. The first hadith, they haven't even read it yet. Man, They're together. The while, like, I'm not making any shudder. I'm not making, because I asked so many scholars and never one said anything. The scholars of Allah, they just... That was the response I got when I asked them. So I said to them, does that mean one can make an intention to do something for the Prophet of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam? And well, like I said, there's no answer. I don't have the answer. I, I'm not of those people that... But that's something to think about. That's something to think about. Now where is the maqam, where is the position of the Prophet of Allah, alayhi salam, if the hadith says, مَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَةُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Wow, wow, al atuf in the Arabic language, they join together. Or even in the Arabic, even one can come before the other. In the Arab, we're not making tafsir, we're not making sharh of the, of the, we're just saying that's the place of the Prophet of Allah is salam. the person who goes with the Prophet is salam, and does for the Prophet is, salam, is doing for Allah, and we know that we know that, One, the order from the Prophet of Allah, if you're praying and the Prophet calls you, which is not going to happen, but in the day it's where you fought to break your salat, that's what the hukum is that's what the ruling is in the fuqaha that's what they, that's what they said He's calling, the Prophet's calling, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alright, so don't get caught up in that. It's not, don't get complex on me, right? And I have all these messages. I don't want, it's just something to think about. Yeah, just something to think. Don't overthink it, though. Don't think it, but don't overthink it. Just cut the over out and just say, wow, the Prophet has got a big maqam, a big place. He's so relevant in our lives and in our intentions even. Whoever makes hijrah to achieve some worldly benefit or take a woman in marriage. There's the Muhajir, Umm Qais, I think it was. He went, he made the, she said he wanted to marry this lady in Mecca, and she said, No, nah, I won't marry you unless you become a Muslim. And the Hijrah came, she made Hijrah, he followed her, he wanted to get married. What for? They got a special place, the Muhajirun. The migrants have a special place, although there's only a few of them. There's only a few hundred, some 200, some saying 400. There's only a few hundred, there wasn't that many. There wasn't that many. When the, ten years later, there was 124,000 Sahaba. At that time, 200 is the, is the closest number that you hear. There was only a few hundred. They got a special place, the Allah, because they, they toughed it out. It was hard going. If they were doing it for Allah and His, and his Rasul, والسلام, they wouldn't have made it. When, when, and this is another thing. When was there nifaq in the Ummah? Tell me when there was nifaq in the Ummah. In the fact is hypocrisy. When were the hypocrites decided? When were the, you know, Sultan Munafiqun and all these things? When did that happen? Medina. So this is, a, this is a poignant point, right? In Medina, when there's the madhar, yeah, when there's the manifestation of things. So in our associations, in our groups, in our countries, no, everyone's all good. The people we know, they're all good. But as soon as there's something to argue about, as soon as there's something to fight about, as soon as there's a bit of cashish, as soon as there's a bit of something, Everyone's fighting each other. Why? Because there's the malhar. There's the appearance. And that's going to be in our lives. Yeah? Husband and wife, they're all cool. They're all good. Then all of a sudden, there's cars, there's money, there's comings, there's goings. She's like, I don't need him. I don't need her. I made him. I made her. And then, uh, it's what happens to the Amazon bloke, right? It happened. They got divorced. And that's what I was hearing anyway. Mac? Then they were fine. Now there's billions of dollars there. 120 billion? Each, you know, and we no good no more, no good no more. So no, no one can get along anymore. In the old days in the village, one house, five families used to live in the house, and each family had 10, 15 kids. They loved it. Now they got their own houses. They still can't. They can't get their families, brother, sister, uncle, auntie, cousin. They can't get along. They can't. So the malhar, that's what brings out the nifak. Because why are people doing it? Oh, don't worry. It's popular. It's trendy. It's trendy. Everyone's doing it, growing a beard. Everyone's doing it, wearing hijab. I may as well just join the crew. But what's in here? 
my intentions aren't straight, then got nothing. Then his hijrah is to that which he made hijrah. He's got nothing. So this, this is that, that Prophet made that, said that hadith in a sermon when he first got to Medina, according to, to Ibn Hajar al Askalani, I think it is. A Suyuti, Afwan Imam a Suyuti, he says that when, when he came to, uh, to Medina, he, he made that, he made that uh, a sermon, and that's what he said about Hijrah. Because that's, that differentiates the people. That differentiates the Marathi, the, the Muhajireen, the Bayat al Radwan, Bayat al Aqaba, the Ashar Mubashirun, the Ashab Badr, all the different, the different Sahaba, the different companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were in different states and different tests. They got different levels on this, in this earth and different nearness to the Prophet of Allah Alaihi Wasallam in this life and the next life. Sayyidina Bilal ibn Rabaha, he's an Abyssinian, he's a black man, right? African, dark colored. He's, he, the Prophet hears his footsteps in Jannah. <laughs> he's, he's a big timer. I'm a player, we don't use that word anymore. Right, whatever. He's, he's the top of the range. Whatever you want to say. He's the, the top of the range. It doesn't matter what colour, what, what creed, how long one's been Muslim, if one's from a noble family, one is there, it doesn't matter what country, what size, what caste, if you're Indian. All that stuff doesn't make a difference. It's what's in here in terms of how one uses it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the homework. Homework is check myself. Why am I doing what? Why am I putting my shoes on? Why am I doing it? Why am I wearing the clothes I'm wearing? Why am I brushing my teeth? Why am I jumping in my car? And most, first, and if you can do that, why am I watching this thing that I'm scrolling on? Because it's just a passive receptive state. We're in a state of just scroll. And just, then you look at your watch, and you, like I was watching, you know, some great thing, and then all of a sudden I clicked on another thing, and then I'm just watching like dogs running around or something, I don't know, <laughs> or cats. Most people watch cats, isn't it? Right? How do I get there? Why? Because I, I wasn't checking my intention. I wasn't checking my why. I wasn't checking my, my, my near. If I can start to do that, my life, guarantee. If you do it and it doesn't change, come back and we'll work it out. But be ibn al subhanahu wa ta'ala, just once, just once in a week, if you can do it, bi your life will change. So inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we'll do is, because the Maghrib prayer is in the middle of the class, so what, what we normally do is, we, we revise what we did in the week before, and we just went through the hadith, so I'll ask you what each of the words means, every week, just five minutes. If we get it, it'll be real quick. If we don't get it, it'll be real slow, and it'll be like pulling out your teeth and going to the dentist, and it'll suck. I don't want that to happen, so just <coughs> revise it. The PDF will be available to download, and I heard there'll be books. Is it next week? Inshallah, bismillah. So what we'll do is we'll just do that revision, and maybe we'll read Wurda Latif for Imam Al Haddad between the time. It only takes about eight or nine minutes. It's a it's a word. Can you guys get it up there? Can you guys put it up so people can can have a look at it? It's a word. It's all masnoon. All the masnoon du'as the Prophet used to say. They're all in this word, and then we can pray Maghrib, and then we can start the class. I don't want to go for more than about 40 minutes, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And then you can also ask the questions before about the last class or saying that you, that you did now. Like I said, just by showing up, your sins will be forgiven, inshallah. But really, if you want to benefit, you have to read the text. You have to read the text. If you don't read the text, you won't really benefit. And then you read your notes. It won't take long. Even if you've got heaps of notes, it won't take you more than 10 minutes to read it. And if you, you know, if you screenshot it or whatever, if you write, or I think writing is better because apparently you remember better, but everyone's free to use whatever they want to do. And if, you, if you're writing it down, you can look at it wherever you are. That 10 minutes, you know, you're in wherever, waiting for whatever, doing whatever. It's better not to do it that way. It's better to set aside 10 minutes. If you can set aside 10 minutes before Fajr, after Fajr, after Isha, after between Maghrib and Isha, whatever it might be. If you can set aside that time, and then every time that 10 minutes, you revise, you, you'll benefit. It's not, it's not that hard. Like there's a little bit of difficulty at the beginning about intention, but the rest of it, it's actually a pretty easy book because it's practical. 
what are the intentions of going to Hajj? You just list them all. It's like not that hard, but it's hard on on the soul because it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do to, and then we'll, then we'll talk about ikhlas and niyyah. So the niyyah in itself is the purpose is just istihdar, getting that istihdar, like ha- having presence of mind when one's doing it. That's one thing, but then having ikhlas, oh, it's a completely different thing. So the book won't be hard to do, it'll be easy to read, inshallah. And we can get through it quickly. Not that I like to, but we can if, if that's what we wanted to do. The thing is, it's hard. Because like the knee is wrong, it's it. It's all over. The knee is not there. You didn't even get started. And it's not an easy thing. Like I've been doing whatever offer I've been doing for how many years and my intention wasn't ever there. I was just doing it for the sake of doing it. Or I was doing it for the sake of good. That's scary to me. I find that really scary. I find that like all the sacrifices and time away from whatever things and, and then at the end I've got nothing to show for it. Bad news. All right, so we'll just quickly revise it. We'll go through the hadith. It's not that hard, you know. You can probably even look it up somewhere and go through it. You got, if you've got your friends in the class, you can talk about it. But it's not that hard. You should. And I guarantee you've heard it a hundred times anyway. So we'll go through it next week, inshallah. Then, depending on how much time we have, we'll do some questions or just a little, little bit of explanation, further explanation. Then we'll do the word of Latif. We'll take normally it takes seven or eight minutes, and then we'll pray our Maghrib, inshallah, and then we'll start the class. And that'll keep going until daylight savings. Only Ramadan's going to come before, oh no, after until daylight savings finishes. End of March, eh? So end of March is daylight savings. Ramadan will start anyway. Mahak? No, May. So we've got April. April. All right. So and then after. Once Maghrib is before, then we won't do the word of Latif, we'll just do the revision, and then we'll, we'll get straight into the class. But while the Maghrib's in the, in the middle, so we don't lose that continuity, we'll, we'll do it that way, inshallah. Are there any questions about any of that? Or about anything else outside of the, that subject? No. Najashi. What do you mean? What, what was he? Najashi, Nagar? Negus. Negus, Negus. Negus, like George, but not Negus. You don't know him, huh? And number two? And the second one was something random, and it's about uh, sport. So I remember reading about um, how from the next slam, you're not allowed to punch the head. Yes. That's right. So any sports, combat sports, that you punch someone in the face is haram. Even if you are, whoever you are. Khabib or anyone else it's, can't do it, it's haram. So you can train, you can train in that sport. If you want to be a boxer, you can train boxing and put the headgear on and all that, but you can't actually fight because what's the point of fighting, of boxing? Knock the guy out, right? Knock him unconscious. It's haram. It's haram to do that. It's haram to harm someone in that way unless in certain circumstances. Like, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. It's very clear in Islam. It's very, very clear. I know we've got heaps of Muslim boxers, Muhammad Ali. He's probably the best da'i of the 20th century, if you ask me. He's the best caller to Islam. Everyone, like you guys know him now, and he, you know, the guy stopped boxing in like 82 or something. Most of you weren't, most of you weren't even born in 82. So we all know who he is. That's, that's something for him. That's between him and Allah. We don't know his situation. We don't know people's stories. We don't need to judge anyone. Yeah? But for me, if I'm, if I'm trying to do what's halal, I don't punch any. Even in, even in Qital, when the Muslims are fighting, we're not supposed to hit in the face. I mean, if it happens, it happens, but we're not supposed to. The banan, necks or arms, or even legs is okay. Tell me. All right, any other questions about anything else outside of the subject? Someone's got a question, but they're too shy to ask. So next time, you can, you can write it down, if you like, on a piece of paper, and just pass it around, and it won't know where we, we got it from. And then um, we can answer the question, inshallah. Because it's important that it's important that um, that if you've got questions about things, that and there's can you like fax it, whatever. It's, we'll start something up, inshallah. What What are you going to do? We'll start something up. All right, then they're going to put something on the um, somewhere on the Facebook page. You can direct message it to the Sheikh Hassan page. So direct message to the Sheikh Hassan page. Yeah. Direct message. And we'll collect, the, we'll collect the messages and we'll, we'll, we'll give it to Steve. All right, and at the end of the class. Yeah. So if you've got it out there, if you've got something, 
You can ask the question and we'll answer the question, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, best we can be in the Allah. Is that a question that's coming? No, something else? All right. Any, anything else before we finish? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala khayla na'am wa ala wa sahbihi salam ya rahman rahim alhamdulillah wa rahmatullahi wa sallam ya sallamu ala hayatu wa barba matta qabla minna ya rahman rahim ma fa'anna min min qawlin wa amal ya rahman rahim la taj'al hadha al-dars wa hadha al-kalam faqad laqlaqa al-lisan ya rahman rahim la yaj'alu yadkhul fi al-qulub ya rahman rahim wa fi al-arwah ya rahman rahim wa fi al-asrar ya rahman rahim as'alaka ya rahman rahim an tunawwir qulubana bila ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah wa taj'alha akhir al-kalam من حياتنا يا أرحم الراحمين أن تبعثنا عليها وتحشرنا عليها يا أرحم الراحمين وتدخلنا الجنة فيها يا أكرم الأكرمين يا الله I ask you to forgive us and forgive our sins and to lift the difficulties and the trials and the tribulations of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad عليه أفضل الصلاة وأزكى التسليم يا أرحم الراحمين we ask you to put blessing in this class يا الله we ask you to illuminate our hearts from the words that we hear يا أرحم الراحمين and not just make it an event that we attend يا الله for fun or to get away from whatever else we're doing or to meet our friends but يا الله make it يا أرحم الراحمين a place for us to, to truly be illuminated and enlightened, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah, to give us the knowledge that's beneficial for us so that we can practice that which we, we, which we t uh, teach and which we learn, Ya Arham ar -Rahimin. We ask you to bless this place and bless those who allowed us to have the class here and bless those, Ya Allah, that organized all the things to make the class possible, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to forgive us and forgive our sins and to forgive the sins of our, four, our, our mothers and our fathers and our forefathers and to bless our Mashaykh, Ya Allah, and make us benefit from them.